In this video, I will demonstrate adding a categorical independent variable into our regression model. So here's the tracking company's data set. In addition to the quantitative attributes, number of miles driven and the number of deliveries, we also have the third independent variable, which is a categorical or dummy variable that is highway rush hour driving. So the value of zero represents a driving assignment that doesn't include a congestion segment on the highway during afternoon rush hour, whereas a value of one, meaning that that driving assignment includes uh, driving on a congested highway during rush hour. So this um, categorical data has already been what we call dummy coded, showing the uh, values of zero and one. So it's a very easy process. We now can treat it as a numerical variable and just add to our regression model. So under the data, data analysis, select regression and click OK. And for the Y is the same dependent variable, which is the driving time that we are trying to predict. And the X range now we are including all three independent variables. We want to check the labels because our first rule contains the labels or name of the columns. And we're going to keep the confidence level at default 95%. And we're going to output uh, in the same worksheet. And we check the residuals and residual plots and click OK. So for each of the independent variable, we have a residual plot. And we can see that the new R square is 0.88. So that means 88% of the, <clears throat> so that means this model can explain 88% of the variability in the sample data set, which is even better than before, right? So this one, including the highway uh, independent variable compared to only the miles and deliveries previously, and that's 81.6%. And now we get 88.4%. So we have a increase in the R square, which is good. And we have the coefficients, so we can form the multilinear regression equation, y equals to negative 0 0.3302 plus 0 0.0672 times miles plus 0 0.6735 times number of deliveries plus 0 0.9980 times highway and the y is actually time of delivery so this is our new um, multi-linear regression equation that considering also the highway rush hour driving uh, so what that means is that if the driving assignments, including driving on a congested highway during rush hour, then it will add 0 0.9980 hours to the delivery time, almost one hour, 59 minutes to the delivery time. We can also see that the highway residual plots, uh, we have only two types of values, zeros and ones, right? So that's why we see them like that. We see overall that the uh, residuals distributed along the mean of zero line uh, with a little bit more on the one side and over here is a little bit more res negative residual on the zero side, but they're not that obvious and that is not too much a outlier. So overall, this model still performs pretty good. The inference is pretty good looking at this residual plots for highway. When we have a categorical variable, uh, we often have the original data set coming with text-based data for each category. So for example, in this uh, example, we have a fuel type that is categorical variable, and uh, it has three different types. If we use the filter, we'll be able to see we have three different types of uh, fuel. So we need to transform them into uh, dummy variables in order to further process and apply linear regression algorithms. 
So what we do is that we can use the analytic solver feature. So it's under data mining, transform, and categorical data, create dummies. So when this one's loaded and the variables will show and the first row contains headers already checked. If not, then you can specify the data range manually and uh, check this box. And then, then we want to select the fuel type from the left to the right. So that's the only categorical uh, variable that we want to factor into um, dummy variables. Click OK. And what this does is that it will output a encoding worksheet. You can see it's converting the fuel type into three new columns. Each column represents a uh, typical fuel type. And for each record or driving assignment, if it use one of the fuel types, it will mark one for that fuel type. For example, the record one, the first driving assignment used diesel. So then it has the value one in the fuel type diesel column, but zeros in the other and so on. So we can copy back to our original data set. And we have, so we have all the 1,436 records with their fuel type transform into dummy variables. Now we talk about the multi-collinearity, which is the independent variables are highly correlated to each other, which we want to avoid. And because these three dummy variables created out of one categorical variable, so we only need two of them so that we can avoid multi-collinearity, right? So because with the two known, we already know the third one. So if this one's zero, this one's one, definitely the other one's zero. Because for one single driving assignment, it can only use one fuel type, that's the assumption. And similar, similarly, you can see that the driving assignment number nine, it has the fuel type patrol. So this two are zero, we already know that this one must be one. So we wouldn't include this third one into our uh, linear regression analysis. So let me rearrange the fuel type, move it aside. And so I have all the independent variables grouped together. So I'm gonna click the data analysis regression. And for the predicted Y dependent variable, I'm going to choose the price. And then for the independent variable, we're going to have age, miles driven, and the first two field types. And then uh, we're going to output it on the same data sheet. I have the residuals, residual plots. Click OK. So that's our um, regression model. And this is our R squared 79%, which means the model explains 79% of the variability of the data set. And we have the coefficients here, so we can form a multilinear regression formula. So which is Y equals to intercept plus negative 149 times age plus negative 0 0.02 times miles, plus negative 183 times the first fuel type, which is CNG, and then plus 730 uh, times the second fuel type, which is diesel. So it looked like from the signs of this coefficients that um, if the automobile uses CNG actually brings down the price, uh, in average and if the motor automobile is um, running on diesel then it actually the price goes up this could be explainable that um, the automobiles that runs diesel probably more like a truck type and that's like more capacity and heavier and probably the price will be higher too notice that the p-value for the fuel type cng 
is actually pretty high. It's a 0 0.65, and which is greater than the 0 0.05. So that means the fuel type CNG is not a significant factor that influence the price. So we can remove the fuel type CNG from our regression model.